nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Accurate precision. Shoot, I never thought we'd end up here. Yeah, I never thought we'd make it to a fourth video either. Why are we in space? And why are we moving in slow motion? I don't know, because like in every space movie, you gotta move in slow motion. It just looks cool. Okay. Teachers! In space! Physical behavior of matter, key concept one. Matter can be classified as a pure substance, elements or compounds, or as a mixture. Now, elements and compounds are both pure substances because they have their own distinct set of physical and chemical properties. Now, mixtures are simply physical combinations of those elements and or compounds. Physical behavior of matter key concept two. Pure substances have definite and constant compositions, while the proportions of a mixture can vary. Elements and compounds are both pure substances because they have definite compositions. They're always made up of the same type of matter. On the other hand, mixtures don't have definite compositions, we can vary their compositions as much as we want to. For example, gold is a substance and an element because it's only made up of gold atoms. NaCl, table salt, is a substance and a compound because it's always made up of Na plus and Cl minus. Salt water, though, is a mixture because I can vary the proportions of salt and water in the mixture. Physical behavior of matter, key concept three. Compounds, H2O and NH3, for example, can be broken down by chemical means, while elements like H2 and AU cannot. We have to remember that compounds are made up of chemical combinations of those elements. So those compounds can then be broken down into those elements that form them in the first place. So for example, HGO is made from HG and O. So when it's broken down, it can be broken down into HG and O2. And then those two themselves cannot be further broken down by chemical means. Physical behavior of matter key concept four. Elements, compounds, and solutions are homogeneous. Mixtures can be heterogeneous. Elements and compounds are both pure substances. So by default, they have to be homogeneous. Homogeneous means that there's a uniform appearance based on an even distribution of particles. Now, mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. A homogeneous mixture, also known as a solution, is going to look the same throughout, and examples include air or sugar dissolved in water. Heterogeneous mixtures, on the other hand, have a non-uniform appearance. We can usually see the individual parts. For example, oil in water or sand in water. Physical behavior of matter, key concept five. When particles are rearranged, but no new substances are formed, the change is physical. For example, when water at a liquid phase goes into the gaseous phase. When particles are rearranged and new substances are formed as a result, the change is chemical, such as H2 and O2 forming water. Now, physical changes include things like dissolving, phase changes, and changes in size, but no new substances are formed. You still have the same components. Notice in the diagram, when phase changes occur, the particles just get closer or further apart from each other. Chemical changes, however, create new substances on the product side, so you always have to compare it to the reactant side. Now, hydrogen and oxygen, when they bond together to form water, they have come together in a completely new way. Physical behavior of matter key concept six. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of a substance regardless of the size of the sample. Temperature is not a form of energy. Energy may be mechanical, chemical, electrical, electromagnetic, sound, thermal, or nuclear. 
The faster the motion of particles in a sample of matter, the higher the average kinetic energy, and thus the temperature. It's easy to mix up temperature with other forms of energy, but here's the breakdown of the different types. We have a bunch of different types of kinetic or moving energy. They include mechanical, the movement of large objects, electrical, moving charge, light or radiant energy, sound, which has to do with compression and expansion of air, and heat, which is related to particle motion. We also have different forms of potential or stored energy. They include chemical, which is stored in chemical bonds, and nuclear stored in the nucleus. Physical behavior of matter, key concept seven. Heat, thermal energy, is transferred from a body at high temperature to a body at low temperature. Think of heat as a transfer of thermal energy. Heat will always transfer from a body at high temperature to low. This is because high energy, fast moving particles will always transfer their energy to slower moving, low energy particles when they collide. Physical behavior of matter key concept eight. Phase changes involve a change in potential energy while the kinetic energy, temperature, remains the same. Energy is needed for a phase change to occur. However, we never observe the temperature changing. Therefore, the kinetic energy must stay the same. So if energy is constantly being added for this phase change, and we know it's not related to kinetic energy, we must be changing the potential energy instead. Physical behavior of matter, key concept nine. A heating or cooling curve can be constructed to illustrate the phase changes of a substance as heat is added or removed at a constant rate. Now in a heating curve, on the slanted parts, the sloped parts, is where kinetic energy is increasing and potential energy is staying the same. On the flat parts is where we see a phase change. Now on the flat parts, kinetic energy is staying the same and potential energy is increasing. Now on a cooling curve, everything is exactly the opposite. So where you have kinetic changing, it's actually a decrease, where you have potential energy changing, it is also a decrease. Physical behavior of matter key concept 10. The kinetic molecular theory abbreviated KMT states that gas particles are in constant random straight line motion, have collisions with no net loss of energy to the system, have negligible volume, which means each gas particle is very small compared to the distance between them, and do not have attractive forces. Now, if we're talking about an ideal gas, we need you to know these assumptions. That's really all there is to it. Physical behavior of matter key concept 11. An ideal gas is a model used to explain the behavior of gases. Gases are most like ideal gases when the temperature is high and the pressure is low. Now like Shu just said, this is one of those concepts you just have to know. Physical behavior of matter key concept 12. Avogadro's hypothesis states that equal volumes of gases contain equal numbers of molecules when measured the same temperature and pressure. If we look at our example, we have three different gases. They're all at the same temperature, pressure, and volume. This means that they have to all contain the same number of molecules or moles. Now, they do contain different masses, and that's just because they're different gases with different formula masses. The key point to take away here, though, is that they do have the same number of molecules. Physical behavior of matter key concept 13. There are several methods available for separating mixtures. They include filtration, which separates based on particle size, distillation, which separates based on differences in boiling points, and chromatography, which separates based on solubility and molecular polarity. Now in filtration, which separates based on particle size, Substances that are dissolved will pass right through the filter. Anything that is larger and is not dissolved will get caught up in the filter paper. Distillation separates based on differences in boiling points. So in a mixture of acetone and water, the substance with the lower boiling point, in this case the acetone, will get boiled off first and collected. In chromatography, which separates based on molecular polarity and solubility in the water, will separate out the pigments of black ink. As we can see in the results, the yellow was the highest. This means that the substance that makes up the yellow pigment had the most polar molecule 
and was most soluble in the water. Physical Behavior of Matter Key Concept 14 Elements and compounds can be identified by their unique physical and chemical properties. When we observe physical properties, we don't change that matter into new matter. For example, density, melting point, and boiling point are all physical properties. Chemical properties, on the other hand, are observed by actually changing the matter into new matter. Examples include flammability, reaction with an acid, ability to rust, and any reaction with any other element. Physical Behavior of Matter Key Concept 15. The combined gas law can be used to describe changes to the pressure, Kelvin temperature, and or the volume of a gas. Now, the formula for the combined gas law can be found on table T of your reference tables. Remember, this calculation is used to find the changing conditions on a gas. Now, pressure can be measured in any unit. Also, the volume can be measured in any unit. But it's important to remember the temperature must be in Kelvin. So use your reference tables, if you have to, to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. And one last thing, if you see STP, that stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure, which can be found on Table A. Physical Behavior of Matter Key Concept 16. Heat calculations found on Table T can be used to calculate the amount of heat needed to change the temperature or the phase of a substance. If you have to find the value for the amount of heat absorbed or released, and you see that there's a temperature change, you're going to use the formula Q equals MC delta T. If you need the value for the specific heat and the substance is water, you're going to go to table B for that constant. Whenever there's a phase change, however, we're going to use a different set of formulas. For melting or freezing, we're going to use the formula Q equals MHF. The heat of fusion value for water can also be found on table B. If we have vaporization or condensation occurring, we're going to use the Q equals MHV formula. And again, the HV value is on table B for water. But we never Wait a minute. We wore these same clothes in the last video. Wardrobe! Wardrobe!